Hey, welcome to the 2019 Sony Vineyard Pinot Noir release. We have been doing Sony Vineyard Pinot Noir since, gosh, 1997. So uh, I think that makes this the 23rd uh, release. With me, I have Ed Kurzel, who is a dear friend, a platinum member, and also our general contractor. So if you've been to the winery lately, come check out all the cool new things that uh, we have behind us. We've got some, some new stairs that are replacing the old the old falling apart wooden stairs from the main parking lot and all kinds of new fun things, giant shade sails over the tasting patio. So uh, that's thanks thanks to Ed. So uh, thank you, Ed. It's, uh, we, we've got a, a great start and a, and a lot more. I, I, uh, Ed keeps threatening to retire, but I think I've got at least 20 years worth of work for <laughs> to do. So uh, You're welcome, Rob. <laughs> I appreciate the uh, invite to this. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun today to taste these older Pisonis and see how they're holding up. and. Uh, it's great to be here working on this project. It's, it's there's so many moving parts to it, and it's such a ongoing and changing environment here, and so exciting to be part of it. I I, I love Ed. Uh, tells me all the time. He said, you know, most uh, most of the jobs that he works on, you know, he doesn't actually go back to. But uh, Ed, uh, I think I think you're here uh, a couple times a week. Uh, you know whether whether you're on the on the job or not. So enjoying the wine, enjoying the wine bar, and so forth. So so he tells me many times like, well, I got to make sure this is really a, a great job here because I don't want to come look at the work if it's not 100%. So so uh, cheers, Ed. Thank you very much. Hey, we're gonna do some fun uh, fun tastings. Uh, we're starting with the 2003. Um, some of you may remember the old granite lo label. So we've got a 2003 Pisoni Vineyard Pinot Noir. So we're in the 19 vintage now. Uh, we're in 2021 calendar year. So we're, uh, gosh, what is it? Would that make this 18 years old? So, uh, the first thing we look at the color. Ed, what do you think? Still got a lot of nice deep color. Very mature. Uh, you know, certainly uh, not past its peak. Yeah, these older wines, a lot of the fruit uh, matures into more of a savory character. Beautiful acidity on that make you you know imagine the uh you know a, a beautiful sous vide pot roast or uh a uh, like a french steak uh, that we, uh, we we shared at carmel a couple of years ago it was a was a uh a hokkaido uh, fred steak uh, in the japanese style uh some of these older wines have that that beautiful savory character that just uh oh, if you if you have one of these older wines uh please sell them back to us because we want to use them here at the winery uh 228 cases produced so the Sony family is an amazing family. We first met them in 1997, uh, and uh, we're one of the very first wineries to to buy their fruit um, back when people knew the Bassonis mainly for their asparagus and lettuce in the Salinas Valley. What, uh, Ed, with this 2003, what, uh, what dishes do you think you would pair this with? Uh, so I just bought an amazing Cote de Boeuf yeah. uh, from San Francisco that I'm cooking tomorrow night, and this would just uh, be an amazing wine to go with that. It, the, the meat's heavy enough, the wine is heavy enough to bring out the best in the meat, and the meat's heavy enough to bring out the best in the wine. Okay, well, I happen to have an extra bottle of this 03, so uh, for your, your pay for doing this video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you go taste that and uh, uh, with, the, with the Cote de Boeuf tomorrow and, and see what you think. But it's, you know, a lot of us don't have, you have the chance to drink these older wines, but I think it's really important to understand that what you're enjoying now, what your uh, the 2019 vintage, you know, has the staying power to go 15, 20 years, uh, if you uh, if you have the proper storage. That's really important. Okay, we're going to move on uh, five years closer to today. We've got the 2008 Pisoni Vineyard Pinot Noir. The bottle changed. Uh, we uh, did 126 cases in 2008. So that's just five barrels. Uh, for many many years, we only got one acre of Pisoni Vineyard Pinot Noir which would translate to 100 to 150 cases. Uh, we're very fortunate two years ago to get a second acre. Uh, it only took us 20 years of asking before we got a second acre. So we're very, very excited about that. So so 2008, uh, colors a, a little bit more, more more brighter red. We've got these, these big Pinot Noir glasses. I love uh, getting the aroma out of there. It just really fills up. The bigger the, bigger the bowl you can get, it allows that aroma, that really delicate floral aroma to, to really expand and, and fill, fill up your nose. So 
What do you think, Ed? The explosion in the mouth when it first hits the, the tongue and the sides of the mouth is amazing. It just jumps out of the glass at you. So. Yeah, I'd say this. I'd say this is at its peak right now. We're at uh, 13 years. Right. Uh, it's still got some of the youthful fruit that we love so much from this vineyard, but but as it, it's so elegant, the, it the texture, the finesse, the tannins are just beautiful. Sometimes when you get you know, Pinot Noir, even Cabernets that are more than 10 years old, some of those tannins really start to get get drying. But uh, boy, I I think this is just. I mean, I might have to give you a bottle of this too. It's uh, hopefully you're you're not eating that uh, Cote de Buffalo. Alone. Oh, the after party of these wines is going to be a lot of fun. Oh. I uh, hope you have an Uber to get home, Ed. <laughs> okay, now we're going to jump forward uh, another seven years. we got the 2015. So, uh, again, all from the Pisoni family. Gary Pisoni is an amazing, amazing talent. Uh, just a, a real pioneer in his love of Pinot Noir. Uh, he and Rich Smith were two of the real pioneers in the St. Lucie Highlands that were planting Pinot Noir before the Highlands was even an Appalachian. Uh, just saw the potential there. He is famous for telling the story of drilling seven different wells, well, six wells before the seventh hit water at a higher elevation. This is the highest elevation vineyard that we have in the St. Lucie Highlands. Uh, and they, uh, it's, the soils are very, very dry. You couldn't grow grapes up there without actually having well water. Uh, and uh, Gary's mom and dad weren't too thrilled when, you know, a well could cost ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. Ed, you've drilled a few wells right. in your time. Yep. Uh, and uh, every time when they come up dry, that's just money that just flies away. But Gary believed and had the the people with the, <coughs> the sticks and the witching and so forth, and and uh, finally found a well that really uh, really hit well, pun intended, uh, a really great flow. So we're very very fortunate. You know, the vineyard was was planted. Uh, in the late 80s and um, you know the first samples we got from uh, from the vineyard were actually made in Gary's dirt floor garage as a home winemaker uh, there was a, a bottle that had the label scraped off and a, and a used cork those were the first samples we got and I remember tasting with George Truquato when we were making our wine at Cinnabar and just said wow there, there is something special here uh, we'll do a whole separate video on garbage day so uh, we'll look, look for a link on that uh, coming soon so how do you think this 2015 I think it's got everything going for it so far. It's got great legs in the glass. It's got an amazing deep, dark ruby color. It, uh, the nose is everything you'd expect from a Pisoni and more, I think, because of its youth, more youthfulness than the first two wines we've tried. It's really starting to get to, you know, even that, you know, I mean, we're talking about, well, this is one of the younger wines at six years old. Uh, most people, you don't have the opportunity to drink a wine that's that, that's this mature. Uh, at six years old, it's still got all that youthful, rich fruit, uh, but we're starting to get some of those secondary and tertiary flavors from, from the aging. And again, the tannins are just so smooth. This is, I, 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 it's, it's almost a shame to be sitting out here and drinking these without a, a whole table full of food. Uh, Ed just got back from a trip to France, so I'm sure uh, sure you had many a meal out in the, in the vineyards in Provence and uh, Languedoc where, where you were traveling that, uh, that these wines were just just be explosive. Oh, they would, they would, they, these wines are every bit as good as the wine, the best wines I've drank in France. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's a lot, a lot of fun. Okay. Well, now we're going to move on to the 2019. So the 2019 is what we're pre-releasing, uh, you know, here in early August. So uh, we've got to find the 2019. So, so with our 25th anniversary, we, we added the gold band on the top and bottom of the, uh, of the label. So, 2019 vintage so this is brand new uh, 12 barrels made so still a tiny tiny production uh, we are one of six wineries that is able to buy Pisoni vineyard fruit other than the Pisoni family and the Francioni family which have their own labels uh, Roar, Lucia and Pisoni estate so uh, it's uh, it's quite an honor they used to sell to 14 different wineries and over the years have uh, pared it down to their favorites. So uh, Testarossa, Peter Michael, Patson Hall, uh, Siduri, uh, 
uh, Paul Lotto. So uh, a few, a uh, few pretty, uh, pretty great names to be uh, to, to be hanging out with. Uh, we're we're thrilled to have been uh, been there since from the beginning. So absolutely, 2019. Ed, you uh, you drink a few bottles of wine. What do you think of this one? Young, young. <laughs> I think it it's it's tasting young. Obviously, it's a pre-release, so it, and I would give it time. It's drinking. I'm. It's one of the ones like Rosella's. Also, it will be one of the ones you're going to want to drink right away. But it's worth really buying enough of it to have it for a while. <laughs> if you can, <laughs> if you can. Um, it just it has everything going for it it's got the mouth it's got the nose you feel it in the back of the throat the finish is amazing still yeah i can still taste for, the finish a minute later for for a young wine it just has everything going on it's just put together very well well this wine reminds me of that old commercial and you have to be a certain age to remember this and a lot of people say well how long will this age and uh, i ask well how many bottles did you buy and they'll say three. And I say, well, this wine will age three months because it's like the old uh, commercial of how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? One, two, three, crunch, three. <laughs> so uh, if you uh, if you have the ability to, to get more than three or four bottles, you will be greatly rewarded for putting this putting this down. But on the other hand, boy, this is this this would be really hard to uh, if I had three bottles and I was having a, a dinner party and the first one went like that because it was just so tasty. I'd grab the second and the third and then uh, tell my friends to go buy me three more bottles. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your support. Behind us is the is the, the new entrance to Testarossa from the main parking lot. Uh, we'll be open starting on July 31st. So uh, when you come, if you normally park in the Redwood Grove lot, maybe try parking in the main parking lot for a change and check out the new stairs. There's a, a lot of great new things going on here at Testarossa. But mainly, Bill Brousseau and his team, man, the wine they make is just just second to none. And we are so proud to to have him as our winemaker for our now going to our 22nd vintage. So uh, to your family, to your health, thank you for your support. Thank you.